Subiaco Oval looking a picture. The Western Derby has drawn more than 987,000 fans since the teams began clashing in 1995. We'll pass the 1 million mark today, and the 1 millionth fan will get a gift at half time. Perhaps not as good as that young fan getting to meet the man, Chris Judd, in the centre. Alongside now of Matthew Pavlich for the coin toss, our umpires Dean Margett, Sean Ryan, and Scott Jeffrey wide for sound, as always on Fox Sports AFL. Sunday football. Matthew Pavlich will have the honour of calling. It becomes almost a ceremony these days, doesn't it? Coin toss won by Pavlich. Dockers to the left of screen. Glenn Jakovic, a very good afternoon again to you. Yes, good afternoon, gentlemen. Can't help but think that Mark Harvey has to throw a few positional changes early. Just can't allow West Coast to start as, uh, as planned. Got to throw it around and get with the West Coast match committee as well as their players thinking about the game. You've got to tell me, Clinton, just exactly how old was Ben Cousins in that vision? <laughs> uh, ben was... I'm waiting for it in my year, Jared. No. I think he was nine. Nine? Jeez, he was a uh, very, very skilled uh, athlete, even at nine. And he was cut then. <laughs> he was indeed. Destined for greatness. Drew Banfield at ground level is set to go as well in what's going to be a terrific afternoon. Drew, good to have you with us. Hello. Oh, yeah, fantastic atmosphere down here at uh, ground level. It's going to be a ripper of a start to the um, game and really looking forward to it. And um, I think if Fremantle can stick with the Eagles, we're going to have a really good hit out. Good on you, Drew. Look forward to your comments throughout the course of the day. It's going to be hot, as we said earlier, and these matchups are going to be so important. How do you see it going early, Glenn? Oh, look, I think Fremantle have to uh, have to throw the initiative around, really go at West Coast. But Jared mentioned in the pre-game, have to win the football, the hard football when it's your turn. Don't worry about West Coast uh, initiating the play. Go in and do it yourself. Then if they can sustain it, hold their intensity. That's been the biggest criticism about them this year. Four quarters of intensity. If they can do that with this game, be there at half time, three quarter time, then they're a chance. And Derby's, while well, they create special players, special things can happen, Jared. Yes, they can. And maybe a young kid and, uh, who's just had eight games experience Experience. Robbie Warnock may uh, make a mark on the competition. He's been thereabouts. He's a young kid uh, from the Sandringham area over in uh, metropolitan Melbourne. And he was recruited by the Fremantle Dockers. And all of a sudden, uh, under the shadow of uh, Sandlands, he's got an opportunity. Matthew Carr alongside of Cousins. They've just given Cousins a little one to the rib cage, which was interesting. There's Mundy. There's Carr. It's on. Western Derby is go from Subiaco. Enjoy it. Cox and the Eagles to the right. Judd and Early Free expect plenty of whistles early. Hayes will be alongside of Judd. Pavley's centre half forward. He's pushed right up the ground though. And Darren Glass has gone with him. He may just play as a, another high forward, essentially as a midfielder, and plenty of push and shove. And we're going to take a little spark here, Clinton. Kerr and, and Josh Carr. Kerr and Josh Carr, two to look out for with an Eagle. Hanson drives it deep. It's an Eagles home game. That's the bulk of the crowd. Staker, Lacroix off the ground. And the gift start goes begging as again there's a push and shove now. It's Staker. Oh, and he engages. There's a free kick. It will come up for the Dockers. It's against Staker. There is going to be so much heat on. Behind play early. Kerr's gone down again. Solomon went down alongside of Judd. There's Josh Carr and Daniel Kerr. Emergency umpire is going to have a permanent occupation out there early. This is McFarlane. Loose man half forward. It's Tarrant. 60 from home. Johnson. Johnson's gone forward. He'll be on the end of it. Michael Johnson. And he marks in his 50th AFL game. Goes quickly, but it's not 15. Solomon has to play on. Hits it towards the hot spot. Farmer, he'd love a big start, wouldn't he? Brett Jones to spoil. Well, good start by Fremantle. I mean, a little few spot fires out there, but uh, look, they took the initiative, went forward, and uh, apart from that kick by uh, Tarrant, uh, it's in there, 450. They want to be attacking. Good start. Cox working it to ground. Crowley with the job alongside of Judd there. Here's Judd. Off for Selwood. Now check. Good rebound. Got to hit yeah, target. Yeah. 100th game for the Eagles today. Check off to Braun. Delivers down the middle for Staker. He's been a key element in the forward line the last few weeks. Driven it up towards half forward. Black. 
Again, spot fires behind play. Terence gone down in the forward line after having a go at Judd. There's a hold in the middle against Braun, a high one. Let him go now, Josh. Let him right go. There's about six people involved in that stash up at the other end of the ground. Crowley by himself. Pavlich delivers inside the 50, over the head of Crowley. Two on two duel. Farmer coming in, as expected. Chick, his opponent. Glass the little slip. Got it to Brett Jones. Chick in the back pocket. Oh, dangerous kick. Turnover. Could be very costly. Warnock, he didn't know what to do. He thought about playing on. In just his eighth senior game, the burden on his shoulders today extreme. Gives it off to the running Grover. Let's fly from 50. And it's the opening goal for the Dockers. What a start. And now they want to go again down in the Docker forward line. They were taking it up to Daniel Chick. Hunter and Tarrant exchange words. There's Hunter now alongside of Ryan Murphy. Good start, Fremantle. Well, it was an inexplicable kick from Daniel Chick. I'm not sure what he was doing, what he had in mind, but whatever it was, it didn't work. And you're right, Clinton. This young man, Robbie Warnock, he was pretty keen to get it on, but in the end, he did the right thing. Explosive as forecast. Derby number 26, 18 to 7, the Eagles way head to head. They won comfortably back in round three by 31 points. Cousins away. Silva delivers Lacroix on the lead. That was outstanding ruck work. Cousins and Cox, they have uh, combined together brilliantly for more than a number of years now. And that was just absolutely world class. This is Mark Lacroix. He's kicked 20 goals this season from just 12 starts, three last week. In their smashing of the Bulldogs by 87 points, their season high score 24 14 last week. His kick is very narrow, out of bounds on the full. Another look, Jared, at the ruck work in the middle. Well, the kid uh, jumped high enough, he's just got to make contact with the body. Then Cousins burst through the pack and hit up the target. The Hazelby's play. kick turnover possible for Kerr goes without it. Black is caught, Good Kerr pressure. is hurt. Eagles through Embley with the footy. Kerr is still down, that kick is a behind. Become very much a targeted player, has the West Coast Eagles young champion. It's and on again, Jerry. Yeah, well, Quentin Wynn's not happy about it. Uh, a lot of physical work being handed out to Daniel Kerr. He's been on the end of a couple already. On oh, in from the kick back into play. No free kick there for Josh Carr. The Dockers have mucked it up again. I thought the umpire missed a high tackle there on Josh Carr too. And that one there was high as well. Mundy forcing it forward. Cousins did well to get rid of Matthew Carr. Pushed off it himself by Crowley. Waters away. The wrestling continues. Now the focus on the footy as the ball comes into play. And Carr takes the mark. Well, that was unbelievable. That there were three blokes, <laughs> sorry, three pairs engaged in push and shove. <laughs> and then the ball came into their area. <laughs> Dockers clear to the outer side. Target is Johnson. Mark Harvey will be disappointed by their clearance, although Johnson ke keeps this one alive just. Traversing the outer wing, runs a long way, kicks deep to half forward, a wrestle, Tarrant to free. Chris Tarrant, Chris Tarrant holding. That's it. Murphy by himself. Murphy's running deep to the goal square against Stengline. They should go to him. Here's the matchup. The kick, though, is very wide. Murphy marks it on the line. That's good. Well, he had to put it out in front of him because uh, the ball took a long time to get back to him. Good play by putting in his advantage. And drawing the boundary line, a quick interchange for Josh Carr. He's been doing some heavy work. McManus, his replacement. Murphy, the man who's been almost shut out by the arrival of Tarrant at the top. Oh, he goes for the miracle! Banana kick, what a goal! And the Dockers get the opening two. Well, the Fremantle Dockers have made a statement early and they've initiated physicality at the man, but they've followed it up by winning the football. And when they've gone forward, they've had an open forward line for their key players to lead into. This time, Murphy, I mean, yep. it's a good play by Tarrant to get it on, kicked it to his advantage. Great goal. It's two goals. Putting a lot of pressure on West Coast now. Excellent run off the back line from uh, Johnson. He's been involved in both of the, Eagles, of the Dockers' goals. He kicked 22 last year, did Ryan Murphy. This is just his fourth game for the season. That's his third goal. Can he get involved? A wrestle on the wing. This time, it's Braun. 
not letting go of Peak and vice versa. Back in the centre, there's a scramble. And there'll be another bounce. Oh, this is tense, isn't it? All around the ground, many spot fires breaking out these two fierce rivals. I wasn't surprised Josh Kyer came off. He'd probably run a <laughs> kilometre and he'd had three fights in the middle. <laughs> Cox the hit out. Farmer goes without it. Prittis is waiting down. Farmer knocked it only as far as Embley. Here's Cousins. Away. Penetrating kick to half forward. Coming out is Lynch. Bounces past him and McFarlane. Johnson, clever. Should be able to gather on half back. Well, he should be able to. A little bit of intensity about it, though, just at the minute. Monday now. Good poise. Got met late. Downfield free. Well, just attacking the man a little bit at the moment, the Eagles. Quentin Lynch didn't need to do that. That ball is going to be rebounded. But one bloke showing them all how to do it is Ben Cousins. He's keeping his eye on the footy. Others probably just uh, focusing on the man at the moment. Dockers by 10 points, fighting to keep their season alive. Here's the bat, Ryan Crowley. Matthew Prittis out of the bat. Three against Prittis, so Crowley. Dockers keeping that open forward line, and they've got some targets there. Farmer, Murphy, Tarrant, and Pavlich in the vicinity as well. Bell goes to Tarrant. Free kicks 4-1 to one in favour of the Dockers at the moment. Tarrant a fraction too far out. Warnock has worked his way to the goal square, now leads. Tarrant goes all the way to the square. Good position, Matthew Carr. It just bounces across the face. Well, just got a very active forward line here, Fremantle, with Murphy pushing deep. It's forcing Tarrant out, and uh, early touches for him. Good sign for Fremantle. They missed an opportunity there, though. They had Bell and Carr, sorry, uh, Cousins and Carr, one on, one on the goal square. It was a great matchup. Ball was in the air. Car had to go for it, not let it bounce through. Applause as we're a punder replaces Staker. Eagles trailing by 11 points, working it out of the back half with Brett Jones kicking towards Hunter on the wing. He engages in a wrestle, managed to keep his feet. His opponent peak went to ground. Hunter towards we're a punder. Pretty. First touch in a while. Away he goes and delivers perfectly on the chest of big Quentin Lynch who is well within range. Welcome back David Wirrapunda really just uh, turned Scott Thornton uh, in circles and went with the football back in the side Jacko I reckon they've got that forward pocket lined up for him. Yeah especially he held his feet very well here as you see on the replay that area of the ground is very very muddy and uh, soft on foot but uh, very well done to hold your feet took possession of the ball. 100th game for the big Q 33-34 on the season though and his accuracy lets him down again. Well, they'll be happy with this three mantle. Ten minutes are gone. West Coast haven't scored a goal yet. And peak off, and Josh Carr charges back onto the ground. Looks like Stengline is going to go to him. Aiden short and safely to Michael Johnson in game number 50. I think they'll be happy with his matchup as well. He's got uh, Rowan Jones, big Michael Johnson, and... Uh, He's been able to run down off that half-back line, rebounding. He was effectively involved in that last goal to Murphy. McFarlane, the target, has to work. In the end, a little knock-on. It was just what was required. Over the head of the leading Murphy. Pavlich getting back. Chick takes the footy, feeds Cousins. Has Cox. Big man covers so much ground. Gets a lot of the footy. 19 possessions a game. And look at the delivery here. Perfect to Hanson on the wing. Well, Gilmore should have tried to slow him down. He runs away. Frees up Hanson oh. to kick to Lynch on the 50. Good movement up forward. He plays on. On the run is Kerr. Going short. Lacroix lost out to Hayden. Now McManus. Quick hands to McFarlane. Under pressure. They're equal to it. Bill. Got it to Thornton. Good build up. Finds Gilmore. Running down the centre corridor. Will he go long? The forwards are all one out. He sends it wide to Josh Carr. Has to get around Cox. Chooses to kick quickly. On the burst is Tarrant. Good hands. Again, a fraction too far out. Oh, mismatch. They've got Pavlich on Cousins in the square. Here's Matthew Carr from 50 for the Duckers third. A 16-point Fremantle lead early. Well, it's really smart what they're doing in the middle. 
They're trying to orchestrate whoever's on Cousins, be it Matthew Carr or Pavlich, to go forward if they get the footy. So they end up with a Cousins Pavlich matchup in the goal square. Now, this time they didn't use it. Last time it didn't work either. But it's something for the West Coast to consider because he may have just got off him there, Matthew Carr. I'm not sure who's responsible. But in the goal square, you see Pavlich with his hands in the air, and he could have been taken out. That was an air of confidence about this 13th place team against one of the premiership favorites and they were really firm in the betting west coast if they win today and beat the ruse next week but they're in the dog fight now and the dockers have got it again mcmahon has kicked it into the back of his teammate jeff farmer chick breaks one two and then follows up his own errant handball and this time robbie warnock is right with cox not letting him be the exit man yeah and therefore the kick is towards a contest and Johnson is able to affect the spoil against Jones. Lays the handball off to Black. Swoops it wide. This is Pavlich. On the left. Goes to Farmer. And Jeffrey can make it a four goal to none start. Well, it's good decision making by Matthew Pavlich. But uh, Michael Johnson's the one that's on fire at the moment. He's had four possessions each time. They've been very effective and uh, been instrumental in goals or goal attempts. He'd love this, wouldn't he? You bet he does. Big start, Dockers. Mark Harvey's the new Kevin Sheedy. They don't need the old Meister, Maestro. Well, here comes the first interchange for the uh, heavy runners. Cousins off the ground, Matthew Carr off the ground. Shammer goes on and Michael Braun also on for his second run of the afternoon. But Jacko, not a crisis but the Eagles need to settle. <laughs> well, they certainly, they need a quick goal just to steady him because Fremantle are making all the right moves at the minute. Their decision-making is uh, first class. Well, Glenn told us this would be a blowout, and he's absolutely correct so far. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Grover against Hanson. It's a very important duel. But Here's they've got to get Gilmore. the ball out of the centre, please. Look at this. Belted there. Gilmore going deep. One-on-one -on -one everywhere inside the Dockers' 50. And we had to tackle Waters there because he dragged the ball in. Oh, and they're very lucky, the Eagles, to get the free. Uh, Fremantle should have just held, him, held the ball in there. Just under siege here at West Coast. They haven't been able to settle. And Fremantle, any moment they get, any chance, any half ball, 50-50, they're applying maximum pressure. And uh, be interested to see if they can maintain this for the remainder of the game. Bo Waters having a terrific season. His 50th AFL game as well today as he finds Rowan Jones on the outer wing. We've ticked past halfway of the opening quarter. The Dockers, who swept the Eagles last year, winning both derbies, looking to avoid a similar fate happen to them this year as Grover marked strongly at halfback. Well, the decision making is poor here, West Coast. They went on a three on two situation. Grover was just waiting for that up and under ball to come in, and he just virtually took an uncontested mark. To the outer wing he goes, and the kick is good for Byron Shammer, the late inclusion for Duffield, feeding Thornton. Delivering towards Farmer, his nemesis check alongside. McManus to follow up. Clever soccer into the forward pocket, giving Tarrant a chance. Hunter in front under pressure. Was being held. And 50 against Jeff Farmer. Well, that just hurts you. you. You're four goals to nil, and you give a, you know, deep in your forward line, we're putting a lot of pressure. Can hear the umpire saying, don't get involved. He wasn't involved in the play. Just silly stuff. On top, they've got uh, under the skin of the West Coast. West Coast are doing what they do well, is winning the ball at clearances, but uh, they're giving the ball back so many times. And Fremantle are, are rebounding so well off the half-back line that when you're on top, you don't give a 50 away to give the opposition an opportunity. As you saw from the graphics, six to none by way of hitouts, West Coast, yet to translate to a clearance dominance. And look at that, Stengline getting rid of his man to take the footy. Kick towards Hanson, who rides the bump. Braun, Kerr, Judd, handy triumvirate there. Judd going deep to the hot spot. Peak waiting underneath it with courage. Johnson almost cleaned up. McFarlane can back himself. Oh, they're on now, Fremantle. Gilmore, can he go? Hearn chasing him. Lunges. Gilmore away. Field opens up. Could go all the way. Ruckman, 55 out. Oh, where's he going? Over the head of Tarrant and Brett Jones will mop up to Hunter. 
Not sure you need a little bit of experience around him. Call him a goal for goal. I mean, he's a very, very long kick, especially on the run. Daniel Gilmore had a chance to possibly put Fremantle further in front. Still yeah. had hit the target, though. I mean, it was just a brain explosion. CB on the counter-attack for West Coast. Drives it over the head of Lynch. Push he got out. pushed in the back by McFarlane. Unnecessary. The ball was going over the head. Johnson doing well again to cover. But it goes back to Gilmore. It was just a uh, poor mistake at the other end of the ground. It was a uh, set shot from a 15-metre kick. Or, as you said, Jacko, have a shot yourself from 45 out. And you extend this lead. So Lynch again in his milestone game. Just nine majors in his previous eight starts against the Dockers. And the crowd grown as one as it drifts across the face and the Eagles' chances continue to be sprayed in this opening stanza. Well, they're getting the ball away from the kick-ins pretty easily at the present time. Good tackle on Crowley. Josh Carr just needs to settle a little bit. He's had a couple of fumbles today. He's been involved in a few fracas. Shammer off the ground towards half forward. Near the boundary line. Tarrant's going to try and keep it in. Paddling it on. Good work for Warnock. He got it on quickly and deep. Farmer getting back against Chick. Chick's happy to concede a behind. What they're doing well with Fremel is that at all costs they're playing on and they're just softening the ball. They're surging it on and just trying to catch West Coast out a little bit here and uh, it's forcing them to be a little bit reactive. Cousins trying to get back on the ground. He got up. So did Matthew Carr. Cousins sits down. <laughs> and so does Matthew. Here's Selwyn. Short for Glass. Reigning all Australian fullback. Delivers it out wide. This will be good, Judd. Oh, great Shepherd Hunter. Got rid of Crowley, a beauty. Seabee's dangerous here because uh, Warnock chased Glass. Seabee's pushed forward and Pavlich hasn't gone with him. Lynch from 55. Goal. Eagles get there first. Took a while, but Quentin on the run was a far better prospect. Well, the pleasing aspect for West Coast there at that contest was, as the ball came down, they managed to still hold it in their area. And, uh, it's just a little knockout there. Daniel Kerr forced a lot of pressure for the Fremantle bloke to go down, but uh, Quentin Lynch... I guess when he's on the run like that, he doesn't have to think about it too much. Slaps it on the boot. Very good goal. What was interesting there, though, that uh, Walnut chased the, the uh, Pavlich's man, and Pavlich had to push and cover his. Good first quarter, Clinton. Set it up. Beauty. Dockers by 16 points. CB and Warnock pump it the same way, holding West Coast free. Is not going to water, so it will come back. Well, this is an important uh, five minutes for Fremantle. They've got to finish the game off, or this quarter in particular. Don't allow West Coast, after dominating you know, most of this quarter, don't allow West Coast now, because they've just settled after that goal and leading into it. They're just starting to hit a few targets. They're getting more position on the, of the footy, keeping it away from Fremantle. Not sure what the instruction is for Grover, but he's allowing Hanson to push up the ground. Shammer back for Hayden. Retreats. Balances and hits Monday. More than 42,500 already in this cold room. And Josh Kerr is not well liked by West Coast supporters. He makes his teammate Brett Peak stretch for that. Hasn't played the last seven weeks with a second broken collarbone of the season. This is his first game since their Darwin trip to the take on the Bulldogs back in round 12 Brett Peake they've missed his run this year doesn't know where he's running to right now feeds Hayden he's got options short on the wing and goes to them and we start again <laughs> same man I'm sure he had it there a few minutes ago I hope he's wearing earplugs you'll be thinking I'm not popular oh. Hayes will be now this Under pressure, caught. Embley did well not to give away the free. Kerr just couldn't hit where a punter with the handball. Solomon's handball stolen by Staker. Unguarded goal square. It bounces through. And the Dockers.
Rangers have to do better than that coming out of defence. Well, they certainly do. I mean, they've been dominating this game, but uh, common sense has got to prevail. Look at the scoreboard, look at the time clock, and notice, keep it simple, go down the line. And uh, I mean, they're just trying to generate that play that they had in the first five or so minutes, but that's not going to happen. West Coast force the error there. Quint Lynch, uh, Brent Staker, good goal. Mark Harvey, third game in charge, one and one his record. And this is a big one. Win today, some say. Secure the contract for the next few years. Still holding Tyson Stengon against Umpires red hot on the whistle as forecast. Ten first quarter free kicks. Selwood's doing pretty well at the moment. He's had six possessions. Peter Bell, just uh, the two. One kick, one handball. It's working for the Eagles. Bell remembering, averaging 22 touches a game this season. Glass out of defence with an errant kick. Hayes will be the mark. Now, can they get it on quickly this time? Black, Thornton, we know he can run. Gives the handball to Pavlic. Good run, Josh Carr. Kicks to centre half forward and well read, Brett Jones. But they're just trying to do that cute kick a couple of times. I mean, Tarrant has been on the lead, on the fly, with a lot of space in front of him. But well, the they almost need someone it. leading back to the goal square, because yep. that's where all the space is, Jacko. Rapunda shorts it to the wing, wide ball. They'll do a stock take here with an out-of-bounds for a throw-in. Well, they've done particularly well, the West Coast Eagles, to rein this in. They've forced uh, some pressure, stayed with their man-on-man -man structure, and just put enough pressure on the Dockers to uh, throw up a couple of mistakes and they've been able to capitalise and get back in the game. Waiting in the wings, Emily shoveling it on, CB now. Good pressure by Mundy, but Cousins excellent, got it to Stengline. That's play on. Hearn had it knocked away by Peak. Josh yeah. Carr did well, got it to McFarlane. Jailbreak for the Dockers. Farmer, yep, now it's one on three. The one is Braun, can he keep his feet? He does, he does well. He's still going, Michael Braun. Brilliantly played. And he hears it from an appreciative crowd. Brett Jones. Reynolds, good vision, but he still ignored the obvious lead, which is down the line, as you said, Jack, out of Matthew Pavlich, and that is a lucky get-out. Embley at full stretch, lost out, had Kerr. Handy backup man, advantage play on where a punter should go. Does into the pocket. Lacra has time to follow it up. Centering ball, Dockers waiting. McFarlane. Short ball, Monday on half back. Two and a half minutes to go. Gripping opening term. Josh Carr getting plenty of it. This will be possession number nine. Now Shammer. Good lead here from Tarrant. Shammer with a nice dummy. Works to midfield. Goes straight down the line. Pavlich had it knocked away by Glass. Bell in support. Can he get a hold of it? No. And Stengline, the immovable object. Last for Wirrapunda, loose man is on Rowan Jones. Cox. Can he get there? No, he says he was shepherded out of it. Good mark by Hayden. Inside of two minutes. This is the bloke that's been given a drive as well as Johnson. Scotty Thornton, they're trying to get him up a little bit more. And uh, if they can continue to do that, it just gives them so much uh, versatility off that half-back line. Hayes will be to Farmer. Play on. Now it's one on one in the forward 50, although Brett Jones is getting back now in front of Tarrant to fill the hole. He elects to spoil, gives Tarrant half a chance. He knocked it to Matthew Carr. Got by two, did well. Off to Murphy. Looks for the Dockers' fifth goal. And just misses. Well, they've just got to honour that lead of uh, Tarrant a little bit more. He was on. I mean, Shema did look at him and elected to go more of a to a contest. But uh, when you've got a player with that much explosive pace, you've got to get it to him. Oh, look at that kick in. Extraordinary from Chick. It gives Pavlich a chance. He goes to the top of the square. Oh, no. A comedy of errors. It might still come off. Tarrant to peak. Tight angle. Will he have a shot? He does. Can he finish? You bet he can. It was hard work. But they got there in the final minute for goal number five. Well, I'd just love to see that footage again of Chris Tarrant here. I mean, it's Daniel Kick, mortal sin, off two steps. I mean, experienced player, need to be better than that. But uh, just here, I don't think Chris Tarrant wanted to 
to get it. He's just, I'm not sure if he's goal kicking confidence where it is at the minute, but uh, well done by Pete. Finally, someone did go for goal. A very handy snap from Peak. Chick the villain of that play. Taron can't pick up a newspaper, Glenn, without reading an article about his goal kicking. If he is gun shy, surely he's got to go up the ground more then. But the best way to answer that is go out and kick a couple. Here's Cousins. Sending it wide. Fremantle going to run onto it in the final 40 seconds. McManus for Crowley. Gee, plenty of white uniforms through midfield. Warnick, was he off? He was. Black in support. Down to 30 seconds. McManus goes long. Chick against Farmer. Chick did well that time. Or did he? Embley in support. Braun takes it with 14 seconds to go. Some fumbles by this Eagle midfield right now. Braun going deep. Down to five seconds. And the Dockers fill the gap. And they'll enjoy this sound. Terrific opening quarter from the staunch underdogs. Are we set for a classic? Well, it's got all the hallmarks of it at the moment. I think uh, Fremantle had to get out into the game and they did it very early in the piece. Uh, they really took them on in a physical sense. Josh Carr had their most disposals with nine, but he also was uh, their most physical player early in the push and shove. But uh, they came back pretty hard. Daniel Chick's had a couple of bloopers, but he's also had eight possessions off that half back line. But I think you're right, uh, Clinton. This game is... Uh, set it's on the edge at the present time the good players are in the game and uh, they look pretty well set for a beauty quarter time western derby 26 from a sold out subiaco dockers leading by 17 points 5-3 playing two goals for gets tired. Yeah. <laughs> Remarkable. 5-3 plays 2-4. Quarter time. Dockers by 17 points. All single goal kickers. Daniel Chick getting plenty of the footy. It's been down back a fair bit for the Eagles. Josh Carr with nine touches for the Fremantle Dockers. McFarlane with eight. By way of the numbers, um, Eagles 8-1 to one hit outs. 9-2 on the clearances, including 5-2 out of the centre. Inside 50s the Eagles shading the Dockers there 14 to 13 they wasted some chances early Lynch with one goal two from four shots towards goal in that opening quarter Ben Just Cousins numbers six possessions four kicks two handballs and a couple of wrestles with Josh Carr but uh, <laughs> they are winning the appearances the Eagles but they are giving the ball back across that uh, half forward and deep forward position and the Dockers in that first quarter ran it out so well Michael Broadbridge now, Dockers assistant coach with Drew Banfield. Now, you must be happy with the intensity, the way the guys started that game. Yeah, look, very much so. It hasn't been a great strength of ours this year starting the game, and uh, that first quarter was exactly what we wanted. And a few key matchups in the middle seem to be working for you. Yeah, look, Matthew Carr, we think's done a really good job so far on Cousins. Um, Josh was on Kerr early, but there's going to be a lot going on there throughout the course of the game, so we'll see what happens. Best of luck. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks, Drew. There's Farmer alongside of Chick. The niggle continues. Josh Carr, Daniel Kerr. And at the other end of the ground, you've got Staker in the full pocket. And he's dragged Heath Black right down as deep as possible. Off we go. Quarter number two. Judd restricted to four touches in the first quarter. Forcing it through to Cousins now. Gets by one, two. Not the third. Got it back to Glass, who's charged out of the back half. Kicks a high one to some space at half forward. Becomes a foot race. Judd and Thornton. Judd wins. Keeps it alive. Centering ball. Wonderful pick up Staker. Handball to Wembley. High kick. Will land a few metres out. And Hanson is in front and has the mark. 
Oh, no, hang on. Too high, it'll be a 50. He'll kick from the goal line. Well, it's basically the Chris Judge show that time. Straight out of the centre, got on it, evaded a tackle that should have been made, and Hanson did well, kept his eye on the footy under pressure, and goal. But I don't like the matchup, uh, Staker. He was involved in that one. He led Heath Black to the ball, and uh, Black much better, much more comfortable further out the ground. And at the moment, uh, in fact, Dean Solomon has gone down there. See the free kick over the top here. Just Grover, yeah, was just hanging on there, and then obviously the 50, the arm around the, around the head there by Dean to headlock. Margin, 11 points. Off the back of Hanson's first. In fact, a correction there, it was Dean Solomon uh, with Staker. So his role has changed completely under Harvey and Connolly. Up forward for uh, the former coach, deep with the current. Kurt Braun spears it in the Lacroix direction. Solomon dispossessed. Lynch met solidly. Go on. And you went to ground, your both hands were free, you didn't make any effort. Sean Ryan. 50. Sean Ryan providing the soundtrack, not happy with what he heard from Quentin Lynch. Well, he's been involved in a couple of uh, indiscretions, has the big fellow. Needs just to get the head together. Because this is leading them off the hook. <laughs> Tough there, I thought. No wonder the big man wasn't upset. McFarlane out wide for Grover. He can drive Fremantle deep inside the 50 and does so. Wide ball to Matthew Carr. He's there working his cousin's match up forward. Carr still going with support of Farmer. It's over for a boundary throw in. And he looked uncomfortable there. He was just watching where Matthew Carr was going to lead into because he's never played that role as a back pocket player. So <laughs> the longer Fremantle can continue that because he is a good mark overhead and obviously the height difference between him and Cousins, only Fremantle can get it to him more often. Thornton's gone on to Embley. Thornton had plenty of it in the first quarter. Cox sending it back over the line. I've got to see it. I've got to see it, Chris. All right? You want to show the contest? Yeah, all right. Well, you heard it there. Definite hold there by Crowley on Judd. And Judd was just asking the umpire. He doesn't usually do that, so obviously it must have been there. Cox sends it back over the line again. Just focus on the footy, Chris. The runner being sent away. He's blocking up that space behind the ruck contest. Cox the hit out. Slapped wide. Hunter goes without it. Acrobatically, Burl did well. Got the handball to Warnock. Ambitiously tries the kick oh, to the square. Man. Kerr the knockdown. Off the car, Josh Carr. Off the ground, Josh Carr's got the goal. <laughs> oh, boy. That was something phenomenal there. Well, it's just good play by Robbie Warnock. I mean, it's well, a one-on-one -on -one contest, but we weren't expecting a jacko. But big Robbie here just slapped it on the boot. Good agility by the big fella. He watched Mark Blake yesterday. It's just a good contest between these two, one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, Joshy's got the points at the minute. Yeah. It's just interesting what they're doing. Both of the blokes trying to stop the key midfielders for the Eagles are taking them to the goal square and becoming four forwards. Robbie Warnock, his name is going to be uh, on the lips of a lot of Fremantle supporters before his career's out. Here he goes again, yeah. the big man. 42nd pick a couple of years ago out of Sandringham via Old Brighton. Here he goes again, eighth senior game, getting the footy, losing out to Judd on this occasion. And now, this is where he could be hurt. Cox going the other way. I bet you when he was a junior, he always wanted a handball to Judd. <laughs> he but did not that. like that. Especially from down that way. Here's Cousins now. Goes to Lynch at centre half forward. Good spoil, McFarlane. It's a good match up that. Stenglein lost out to Mundy. Thornton to Josh Carr. He is everywhere right now. A dozen possessions. The game high. Bounce favourable for Tarrant. This is Matthew Carr. He goes to Farmer. It's a good battle, this one. Warnock is calling for it at centre half forward. Farmer goes to him. They've got faith. In this 20-year-old on a big stage, looks for the handoff. 
It's Crowley, and he's going towards half forward, and the kick is good for Murphy, who can have a shot from here. As I mentioned last year, very significant goal kicker. He booted 22. Well, not getting a rest now, and uh, Gilmore comes on. He's trying to work over Cox. He's got CB, of course, to give him a chop out. And these are the goals this kid's got to kick if he's going to make it as a player. He's very accurate, but these have to be going through. It does not. In fact, it won't be a score. Cox was there. Well, from what we've seen, he's generally made the distance. And it is a little bit windy out there, so perhaps, Jack, I know there's protection from that grandstand, but perhaps it is getting down to the ground level. Yeah. Hunter on half back. Well, perhaps he just didn't kick it right. Top of the ladder. 17 points, their lead. Staker going to ground. Thornton under pressure. Got it off to Bill. Quick hands to Mundy. Oh, running to the goal square. Oh, all alone is Tarrant. Oh, and he wanted to play on. He so much wanted to play on because everyone's going to be scrutinising this kick from John Todd to Bernie Quinlan to Barry Cable and Glenn Jakovic. Come on, Clinton, back him in. Oh, I back him in. You're the one that's showing very little faith. Well, I mean, in recent times, but, uh, I mean, this is uh, laid out this air, wouldn't it be? He squeezes it home. And the Dockers get their seventh. They lead by 23 points. The good thing about Fremantle is, in this game so far, is they're taking their chances. They've thrown up a few initiatives. They've gone man on man. They've won a lot of the 50-50s, but uh, every time they've gone forward, they've looked dangerous. And uh, this man here is coming a lot of ground, as he always does. He needs to finish up and kick the goals. Jack, I reckon about now, the whole oh. of Western Australia was holding its breath. Yes, <laughs> yes. Let alone the rest of the country. <laughs> I felt myself holding oh. my breath when he had that shot. It was, uh, it's been an unbelievable yeah. story of the year for Chris Tarrant, who's done uh, so much to put in a great season, but just hasn't been able to kick the goals. Football is a game that can unify a nation, but at times divide a state. And that's what has happened here today in Perth. Selwood now, feeding Cousins to Cox. Emblem. Out wide and half forward is Waters. <laughs> Eagles have got to get a wriggle on. 23 points behind. Meanwhile, at midfield, Cousins was exchanging words with Gilmore. The kick goes deep. Big fly, Staker. And the Dockers are happy to concede it behind. Well, he looks dangerous, Staker, Glenn. Solomon hasn't got the pace to go with him on the run. This is what's happening in the middle. He's got to take his chances. If they're going to kick it to uh, Brent Staker, he's got to deliver. Crowley at full stretch, marks at midfield. Handball's on to Mundy, now Bill. Wheels around Judd. Kicks down the line effectively. Shammer closes to 60. Gives it off to Farmer. Needs support. Look away, handball good to Bill. Closes to 55. Little legs oh, pumping should... feverishly and delivering to Crowley, who can kick from here at about 45. Well, you know the barometer of Fremantle is Peter Bell. He hasn't had a big impact on the game, but he won the football in the middle of the ground, and his ability to run and follow up, I mean, that's, you know, 250 games of experience. Morning, and that's why Ryan Crowley's having a shot on goal, because of their spiritual leader, Peter Bell, his ability to work hard. It's been Matthew Carr pushing forward. Now Crowley, who's on Judd, and Josh Carr working over the Eagles midfield. Dockers lead by 28 points. Can you believe it? And they're getting into the heads of the Eagles. Cousins now and Josh Carr again. The umpire is right alongside. Now Matthew Carr gets involved. Just keep off the face, boys. Keep off the face. Oh, Shammer and Selwood. Oh, this is good stuff, hey, isn't it? the elbows off the face. I'll play three, boys. We go high. We go high. I'll play three. I know boys will be boys, <laughs> but <laughs> really, should we be focusing back no, on the just, game now, fellas? Just walk away, Cousy. Just walk away. The just Dockers away, have kicked Maddie eight Carr. goals from eight goal kickers. Fremantle with numbers at half-back Grover. 
Bill. And a good kick to finding Solomon. Well, it'll be interesting to see who recovers best out of that yeah. wrestle. They're both Cousins and Carr have got their hands on their hips. Cousins has made the first run, but he's now back pocket. No mark paid to Waters. Freed up Johnson to kick to half forward. Matthew Carr dropped the mark. Recovers now. Johnson kept going. Tarrant. Looped it to Matthew Carr. Spins into vacant real estate. Gives it off to Crowley. He can kick his second, but sprays the shot at goal wildly. Well, they just got West Coast on, back, on the back foot here. And uh, just playing good footy. They're in their face, but at the same time, they're prepared to go in and win their hard footy. And uh, they're creating it. Numerous amount of opportunities. Crowley could have had two in a minute. Eagles called today their finals rehearsal. Fremantle said it was their grand final. Stengline short to glass. Farmer closed late. Just got to find some of the uh, run off that back line, the Eagles. It has underpinned their successes. Here's Braun off to Jack. West Coast have won the last fortnight convincingly. Remember, though, they lost six of their nine matches between rounds 7 and 15. And Hunter a little sloppy there. Opening the door for Solomon to take off. Goes towards Tarrant. And the umpire said it bounced. Embley is tackling him then. Crowley the soccer wide. West Coast get their first Stengline to Braun. Good effort, Stengline. That ball had to be won. Rowan Jones feeding Braun. Back to Jones. Selwood. Braun running again down the outer wing. Here's the Eagles leading ball winner. 12 touches now as he kicks to half forward for Lynch. Kick tight on its way there. McFarlane doing very well. Play on is the call. Hanson to Kerr. On the burst out of the goal square was Staker and Thornton has pushed him. He's the man, he's the one that they, I don't reckon they can get the match up for. No, when he's leading like that on the fly, very hard, and Scotty Thornton, he's no slow coach, he certainly can run, and, but uh, when you're leading in the, in the vision of the ball carrier, you're giving yourself every best chance, not only to mark it, but uh, force a free kick, or force your direct opponent, the defender, to try and spoil you illegally, and that's what happened there, you got him on the shoulder. Probably the best matchup is playing on Lynch. Three or more goals three times in his last four weeks, Brent Staker. This for his second. It's missing to the near side. Yeah, I think Luke McFarlane, he's got that closing pace and yeah. he is tall enough. But you don't want to take him off Lynch, though, well, do you? Well, Lynch is playing out deep, which he is. He's playing up on that half-forward line. Wouldn't be surprised to see the move, mate. He's got to make them pay, though. I mean, Staker misses the goals. Yeah. He's not going to draw yeah. anything. The thing is, three, man, three Fremantle players went up and told him about it. So they're right in their yeah. face, uh, Fremantle. They're right getting into their minds and just keeping them honest. And it's working for them. It is their last faint chance to keep the finals hope alive today. The Dockers have to win today. And then still an uphill task, but it stays alive for another week. And they'll be playing a team in the finals mix, Essendon. So they'd consider themselves a chance. Grover. Knocking it out wide under pressure, did well, got it to Black. He's going to get rid of it quickly, preferably long. Does so, although Terrence caught behind Hunter, who can't mark. Tarrant did well, feeds Peak. The speedster away, 70 from home, kicks to the corridor. Pavlich is there. And Matthew Pavlich finally got a metre on glass, and this will be his fourth kick for the match. Well, Chris Tarrant had to win a 50-50 ball. It probably wasn't a 50-50, but he held his feet on that outer wing, got the ball out to peak. But this is good vision by a young player. He looked up in board. He could have ran on a little bit more and taken another bounce, but you go to your key forwards, because your key forwards are arguably the best in the competition in Matthew Pavlich. And uh, Fremantle, every time they go forward, they're certainly looking dangerous. Pavlich looking to become their ninth first-half goal kicker. Led the Coleman by one entering round 18. A docker has never won that award. From 50, kick on its way. It's a beauty. Fremantle by 34 now. What are you looking at me like that for, Jared? This is truly stunning. I was waiting for you to say, can you believe it? Because right now, Clint, I actually can't. I mean, this is just a phenomenal performance. The Eagles players haven't responded as we thought they would do. But everything's running right for the Dogs at the moment. That kick there is the most high 
wrist kick in the yep. game at the present time. If that's half a metre out, there's a little fumble or whatever. It can go up the other end of the ground. But I guess that's the game that you have to play these days. Pinpoint accuracy. Well, Jacko, we're looking for some response here. Oh, well, it's up to West Coast. Uh, it's going to be a remarkable comeback if it's going to be one. But I don't think Freeman are going to allow it. They're playing with a rare degree of confidence. Gilmore receives from Hayden. Goes direct to McManus. Leading Hazelby. into the pocket is Hazelby. The kick is wide of him. Hazelby, though, wants to keep it in. Hearn, Hunter, Chick. Hearn again in the back pocket. Got it out to Wembley. A 34-point game. Eagles, remember, playing for second spot. And the prize, if they're still there in a month's time, at least two finals here in Perth. The kick is long to the outer wing. Lynch going through without it. Bell the crumbs and now the give to Black. Hayden. Happy to retreat, but maintaining possession for McFarlane. They're falling well down in just pure possession the present time, the Eagles. The, the Dockers are just controlling the footy. Thornton about to be caught from behind. Perhaps over-controlling it. And now the Eagles are a chance. The kick comes wide for Embley. Braun will be in support. He uses Michael. Braun now going to half-forward for Waters. Alex to play on. Gets around his opponent. Lines it up from 40. Goes to the top of the square where Lacroix gathers. And he loves these. That might be the spark. Well, it was a poor turnover by Freeman on, with Peak on that half-back line, but uh, the good play there with West Coast, they kept, continue to rush the ball forward here, I mean, uh, by Waters. Instead of stopping, he took the man on. That was that was crucial and just got the ball. Poor chase from Gilmore. I mean, that's draggable because he just didn't put in at the finish. That no, certainly wasn't. Had to put the pressure on. That was just a gimme goal. It was just come back into this contest, players. Please, Eagles, get back into this. <laughs> we don't want to be in front. 21 this year now for Mark Lacroix from his 13 matches. McManus has gone on to Judd. Throwing fresh legs at him. In the centre, Warnock going against CB. Eagles getting it away. Prittis hurrying, hurrying it forward. This is Grover. Finding the boundary line. Well, they can't afford to continue to kick that ball because Freeman are playing a loose man before... Uh, McFarlane there by himself, this time Grover. Both times those defenders got him and rebounded it out. West Coast could be quite selective when they're going into their forward 50. Pavlik's right up the ground. Leaves just two, uh, two in the forward line. Farmers one, Tarrant the other. We're a punder for Judd. She did so well to get that handball away. It Big gives up. Wirapunda a chance. Did McFarlane have a hold of him illegally? Crowd say yes. Umpire, more importantly, says no. Hazelby for Grover just pulls the kick precisely for McManus. Now Black. 28 points is Fremantle's lead. Black goes long to half forward. Wide, it'll bounce in the field of play and then over for a boundary throw in. Well, it was just good po uh, poise by Fremantle after Wirra looked very dangerous. He picked it up. We saw McFarlane. Yeah, it was a good tackle. We did throw the arms up, but uh, Michael Johnson, he's rebound outside yeah. for the back 50. It's the reason why Freeman enjoying a lot of good play out of that back line. Alan Jones caught Hazelby. Deep towards Tarrant. Glass knocking it down for Cousins. Pavlich in pursuit. Some quality in that matchup. Black. Knocking it to space. Eagles fill it. Hearn now Hunter. Can they go on the overlap out wide? Brett Jones running. Kicks to the wing. That's OK. Rowan Jones now. Still slow into their forward line, though. Yep. You can't see it, but Quentin Lynch actually was on the lead. He's now out of position. They've gone to the other side of the ground. It's allowing the Dockers to swarm back. And, uh, well, rebound again. And the decision-making there, that was a two-on-one up-and-under kick. Lacroix can't beat that. 
and the Dockers move it forward with some sort of fluency. Pavlich at full stretch just couldn't hang on. Hunter an awkward bouncing ball but wins a free. Well, very lucky there, West Coast, because if it had a big and Matthew Pavlich, he's filthy because he knew the opportunity that could really have hurt West Coast. They had a mismatch in their forward line there, but uh, yeah, a lucky one for West Coast. Their decision making going to 450. They can't afford to go two on one, and that's what they've done the last couple of times. Good run here from Cousins. He's really working Matthew Carr over at the moment. Should end up with it. Selwood. Looks to go down the centre corridor. So coming out, Leal crashing a pack. CB, terrific mark. Well, I think that's the way home for the Eagles. They've uh, tended, as we've seen the last five minutes, to want to go wide. And their big blokes are going up the middle and they're not being on it. This time it was a bit of a 50-50, but they've pushed this bloke, uh, CB, into the goal square. He's their best pack marker down there. And he doesn't let them down. He's generally a good shot at goal. 14 goals for this season. One of 10 Eagles that have played in all 18 matches this season. The Dockers, in contrast, just six players who have played every game. Important kick this. Chance for back-to-back -back goals for the Eagles. We're in time on of the second term. And CB's kick is good. Still yet to get a multiple goal kicker. 14 goals, 14 goal kickers today. Well, I think they've answered their own question, Jared, when they do go forward. Go to the big blokes, get them one on one, and uh, give them the best opportunity. When a decision making going forward where it's an up and under kick and they're trying to create something, last time they went to Lacra and he had hated and Grover on yeah. him out of that outer uh, wing. You can't, you can't uh, create something on the smallest bloke on the ground. You need to go to your big blokes, especially when they can take contested marks like that. From the centre bounce, four on four in the Dockers' half of the ground, seven on seven in the Eagles' half of the ground. So some space for the Fremantle forwards to work in if they can get the clearance. They might, although they're heading the wrong way for the time being. Bell to Black, back to Bell. And to punch on the handball quickly to Johnson. Goes to the wing with a good ball for Matthew Carr. And here's that space. One on one, Pavlich in front. Over the head of him and Glass. Back near the line, will Glass take it out? Yes. That was a good decision by the umpire and an excellent performance by Glass to use his body to push Pavlich under the ball without giving away the free yeah. kick. Inside the final five minutes of the first half, CB. Matthew Carr, check waiting for it. Moves it to Rowan Jones. Now a lot of space on the outer wing. Get rid of yours. Jones carrying it. Braun in support, calling him on. Receives the handball. Crosses halfway. Sends a poly farmer like handball off to Staker. He's leading wide. And receiving. Well, they've got a bit of a mismatch here, uh, West Coast. Group punter's direct opponent is Johnson. Now, if they can get him isolated and get him on the fly, it just might create a little bit of problems for the big fellow. Because this guy, when he's in the forward line, he can kick goals at a time, threes and fours. Cousins and Matthew Carr off together again. The north wind, is it, Jacko? Has it swung around? Looks like it may have swung around, but the wind is pushing the ball. It should push the ball towards the goals. So if he pokes it out to the left-hand one, It'll drag back, but he didn't kick it out wide enough. Didn't allow enough. And a bounce on the full. Johnson to bring it back into play. They'd be happy to wipe off the next four minutes without a score either way, Fremantle. 22 points to the good. On a must-win game, but some sort of storyline unfolding. In Mark Harvey's third game as senior coach. Already a morale-boosting win against Adelaide. Ordinary loss to Geelong last week. But now the one they crave most. They're not quite in control, but you'd rather be where Fremantle are. 22 points in front. Well, they've got Grover on Quentin Lynch at the present time. Across that half-forward line. Kerr did well to get boot to ball. Stake of the pressure on Mundy. Selwood dives on it. And he's in trouble. Hey, Joshy, just watch what you're doing with your bum. I'm watching both of you. No, I didn't 
a watch. He gave us the good rear end of that car. He gave us a good description of it, didn't he? Yeah. Team Margetts telling it like it is. Mundy's gone to Stoker. It's giving him a couple of metres. The change has been made. Black. They're under pressure for the time being. Pavlich, long way up the ground, finds the boundary line. Well, they're trying to clutter West Coast forward line. They can sense there's three minutes left, so they don't want to allow them to get a goal here. Here's Josh Carr and Daniel Kerr. Well, that is a free kick. Definitely. That boy's got to see it, though. That's been going on night and day in this match. Bumper to bumper. It was in Josh's mind last night. He's carrying it out today. <laughs> Stanker. Good work to Stingline. Sends them inside 50. The bounce of the ball important. Lacra, wonderful handball to Jones. Deserves a goal. Eagles have got the last three. And all of a sudden, the margin is paired back to 16 points. Well, just good work here by uh, Big Mark Seaman. I'm not sure what we'll see it on the replay, but the way he won this contest here. Look at the hands. To the hot spot, Prittis, quick kick in. I mean, uh, that, that's obviously a good set play by West Coast, but uh, Mark Seaman, to be able to read that the way he did, win the tap, it's a good goal. And it's leading to a hit-out advantage of 19-6 to six and a clearance advantage of 18-8. to eight. Game on. They are dominating from the stoppages as with the blood rule, Josh Carr comes from the ground. Rowan Jones the goal. And Josh Carr is hearing it from the Eagle fans. Come he's got the blood rule. He's not supposed to have blood on him, is he? <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> his. <laughs> <laughs> There's the view down the ground. Congestion in the Eagles forward line. The margin was 34 points. It's now 16. We're late in the second quarter. Just David Money need to have a look at that at half time, I reckon, the way he allowed Staker to get three metres in front of him. Created the goal. Cox, the handball. Oh, taking it, Murphy. Black, forcing it wide. McManus, half a chance here. Hazelby now. Goes into the pocket, Pavlich in front. Good spoil again by Glass, doing well. Prittis, the mop-up. Element of risk to the handball, but it comes off. Rowan Jones to Waters. Feeding it back to Jones, look out. Big bump by Black. Prittis caught by Shammer. Kerr now under siege. Forcing it onto Waters. Hot footy right now. Important time in the game. Pavlich away. Caught by Waters, dump, big tackle. Prittis tied up. Black hacks it out of mid-air and fortuitously it finds Murphy. Tell you what, there'll be so many mistakes now because the players are just absolutely knackered. They are out in their feet. Murphy couldn't cover the journey earlier this quarter and that's a poor result that's because the Eagles will go. Big mistake of the mind, that one. Didn't think it through. Stake of the target for Wirapunda. Running with 90 seconds to go. Cox inboard. Into the man running towards him, recovers well. Murphy the pressure on Kerr. Shammer tied up, should be a bounce on the wing. God, gee, they're going in. I mean, oh, it's, it's good. There's a minute left till half time, but to both sides, they know this is where it's at. The game's up to be won. And Pavlich was slammed into the turf by Waters. More than 43,000 watching on. Hazelby kicking to midfield. Waters. Leaks must be screaming right now for these players in the final minute of the first half. Can West Coast get one more? Stingline delivering Seabee on the lead. Lacra the goal sneak. Here's Prittis now. Swings it off to Wembley from a standing start. He'll hit the top of the square. Staker, Staker did he push Free out? Kick. Yes, he did Ooh, push out. Free kick against him. Well, he had two choices on us to stay grounded and uh, nudge him out, which he did. The other one, I think, it was to put the knee in the back and take the ride, and that was probably the preferred option. Just got to disguise it a little bit better. Uh, just an important ball there. I think Grover didn't want to be in the position that he was in and uh, fortuitously gets the free kick. And there's the old master showing the young kid, treating him with contempt, and this time gets away with it. And this could be a kick after the siren from Daniel Kerr to give the Eagles all sorts of momentum going into the change rooms at half-time. This will be four unanswered goals. 
If Kerr can convert from here, what a kick this is. Well, he'll have to take the Dennis Lilly run up because it will test him. Seven goals, seven this season. Kick on its way. Out to the right. A behind only. And at half time, in an engrossing Western Derby Fremantle lead by 15 points. Well, I think that's a great word, engrossing, and that it's been, Jacko. Uh, the Dockers came to play and they have really put it on. There's, uh, you can see a bit of an explanation about the push out, but push out it was. But true to form, the Eagles who aren't playing well, they just found a way to get back into this game and they've clawed their way in. Well, they certainly have, Jared, and uh, it's going to make it for an exciting second half. But uh, Fremantle showed the initiative early. West Coast, jump ahead of him. Haven't seen you this excited for a long time, Glenn. <laughs> Half time at Subiaco, Dockers 58, Eagles 43.